Good afternoon, folks. Ari here from Direct Auto Outlet in Fair Oaks, California. This will actually be a towing video with the 2022 Ford Maverick Lariat. This is the hybrid version, 2.5 liter hybrid electric version. This is going to be a two horse trailer that weighs just about 2,000 pounds, which does actually max out the towing capability for this truck. It'll be interesting to see how this truck handles with this amount of weight on it at maximum towing capacity, how it brakes, how it handles, and how it rides. I have actually never towed with this vehicle before whether it be a light or heavy load so this will be a learning experience for me as well we will actually be going over all of our observations and views as we go along we invite you to join us today as we get on the road and do a test drive video pulling this two horse trailer this two horse trailer came with a seven pin connector so what we had to do is actually get an adapter for it because this truck is equipped with a four pin connector. So the four pin connector uh, to an adapter that goes from four pin to seven pin, seven pin going down from the harness all the way to the trailer. We'll also be keeping an eye and monitoring, keeping an eye on and monitoring the MPGs while towing to kind of see what you can expect from the vehicle as you're towing. We, as you can see, we currently have 4,220 miles on the vehicle. I have already reset my trip monitor to monitor MPGs. And we'll go ahead and change the modes to trailer mode as well tow haul mode we acknowledge that we have a trailer we know blind spot monitoring is not available go ahead and set the camera down as I buckle up bear with us for just a moment all right it is kind of a toasty day it's only 76 degrees right now but it is actually warming up air conditioning is on and lower it down just a little bit to keep noise to a minimum inside here and here we go first observation is I do notice a little bit of bounce on the back of the truck obviously it's not used to having this amount of weight or any amount of weight back there so it does have just a bit of a bounce to it We'll see how it handles as we get up to a little bit higher speeds. Of course, welcome to California. We have the California traffic. Well, while we're waiting here, I'll go ahead and give you a little bit of uh, my observations um, as far as my overall view of the truck and uh, how it's been performing for me so far. Um, this truck has been a very impressive truck overall. Uh, this is not something I would typically recommend for, you know, towing purposes. Uh, this vehicle is uh, typically intended for us, our purposes, is just to commute with and to uh, get parts back and forth as well as our staff so this is not the purpose we uh, purchased this truck for however I do have two three-quarter ton uh, diesel trucks that I typically do my towing with uh, we have cargo trailers as well as well as a, uh, a car trailer as well so typically I am towing with that this will be quite interesting and thank you for joining us here we go we're gonna get started Also, the vehicle does feel a little bit different in tow mode. It doesn't feel like it is too bogged down at all. It is seeming like it accelerates just fine. You do feel the engine straining just a little bit more as if, as compared to if it was empty, of course. Going over a small bump here and a pothole. Handled it beautifully. Actually, the rear is not as bouncy as it was initially when we pulled out so that tells me that uh, over a little bit of a higher speed it actually smooths out quite nicely at lower speeds as the trailer bounces you can feel a little bit more of the weight shift in the rear this is somewhat of a uh, sharper left turn you can't really tell from the camera but uh, in person here this is kind of more of a larger steeper left turn and it handles it quite well 
didn't feel any swaying of the trailer at all going through the twisties and turns the vehicle appears to be handling it with handling it with ease the next road that we're going to be on is actually going to have quite a bit of rough pavement uneven roads and lots of potholes so it'll be interesting to see if it's going to jar us there when we drive uh, any kind of vehicle on this next road that we're coming up on um, it is quite interesting it really puts the suspension through its paces let's see how the brakes handle here with the load on it'll be interesting just because uh, obviously this vehicle is not equipped with a trailer brake controller so the car is actually bearing all of the weight of the vehicle and the trailer and it seems to be braking just fine I didn't I didn't feel like I needed any additional stopping space in order to be able to stop safely with additional weight dragging on to, onto the vehicle as you're coasting and as you're braking is actually helping and assisting in charging your hybrid battery because your regenerative braking is actually uh, doing a lot more work this is the rough road I was previously referring to and uh, I almost want to say it handles it better with a little bit more weight on it. I know that's typical of a uh, three-quarter ton and a one-ton one ton truck once you have a little bit of weight behind it, but uh, I'm actually surprised to see how nicely and smoothly this vehicle handles this road with a trailer behind it. Of course, this is not uh, a really heavy trailer, but it is maxing out this vehicle's towing capability. From a complete stop, I can accelerate, I can completely keep up with traffic. What's interesting to me is even though this is an ECVT transmission, which stands for uh, Electronic Various Variable Velocity Transmission, um, it is still interesting that when you put it in tow haul mode, it actually simulates gear changes. continuous velocity transmission CVT and it's, it's not like an average CVT you would find in a non-hybrid vehicle the E continuous velocity transmission is actually um, a, a generator and a, or slash electric motor on these which actually have uh, up to 60 or 70 percent less moving parts than a regular CVT that you would find in you know for example a Nissan Sentra or a, a Honda Civic non uh, non-hybrid or hybrid at that But uh, it's always interesting to see a uh, CVT or eCVT actually shift. Uh, this is the first time I'm experiencing that with this vehicle. I guess uh, when you put it in tow haul mode, it's doing that to maximize your torque and uh, allow you to be able to accelerate a little bit more smoothly and keep the power band up. So it actually simulates gear changes. Quite interesting. We're coming up on just under uh, three miles on the trip and uh, so far uneventful which is what you want when you're towing I can feel the bounces on the trailer going against the ball receiver but uh, I've actually been spoiled I actually have a shocker hitch on my GMC which I tow with it actually has an airbag on it so that airbag actually absorbs a lot of uh, the shock coming from the trailer onto the receiver um, so it's been a long time since I've driven a car with just a basic receiver with no airbag on it all right so we are at about three miles or about 17 miles to the gallon it's still kind of premature to kind of judge the fuel economy with this short of a trip we do have several more miles to go we'll try to see if we can uh, get a good five six seven miles underneath our belt before we kind of uh, look at the fuel economy and see what our averages might be but yeah looking back onto the trailer there it is the seven to four pin connector uh, that I purchased in order to be able to adapt this uh, seven pin connector trailer onto a four pin uh, vehicle 
uh, like the Ford Maverick is equipped with. Uh, I found on Amazon it was just around $25. That pretty high reviews, it was pretty well regarded and um, so far so good. I tested all the lights, um, signals and brakes and all of them work properly. So it looks like it's uh, doing its job. Might be lying to you if I told you that uh, the vehicle doesn't feel any different. Uh, when you do hit the pots, potholes, you can kind of feel uh, when the vehicle moves or when the trailer hits a pothole, you can kind of feel the jerk on the vehicle, but it's, it's very ever so um, slight and not super noticeable. 55 miles per hour, feels like no effort at all. I feel like I could cruise on the freeway uh, with this trailer with minimal effort. And with complete ease. Now, if I understand correctly, based on my research, when the vehicle is in tow haul mode, the auto start uh, will not operate. The vehicle will stay running the whole time. And we are also using the air conditioning. And the air conditioning does run off of the high voltage battery. And that does also contribute to your range being affected just a little bit. I have experienced that when uh, when I'm actually just driving the vehicle without a load, without towing. It does make a, a significant difference whether you're using your air conditioning or not. Not so much if you're on the freeway. Uh, when you're driving on the freeway and you're traveling at a higher rate of speed, 75, 80 miles per hour, typically your gasoline engine is on, that power is being generated to run that electric air conditioning, so you're not feeling much of a difference in your MPGs. But when you're running around town, and your vehicle is constantly cycling on and off and going into complete EV mode, um, if you're light on the accelerator pedal, uh, that's when you feel the biggest difference because that hybrid high voltage uh, battery is actually running your electric air conditioning. It's the same battery that powers and propels the vehicle, assists, assists in propelling the vehicle. So as you can imagine, you could either direct that power towards getting the moving, uh, getting the vehicle moving, or you can designated uh, for the air conditioning. It is 82 degrees right now, so as you can see the temperatures are coming up. Actually feels warmer. Summer is just around the corner. For those of you who are waiting to put in your Ford Maverick order, order banks are expected to open August 16th, if I'm not mistaken. However, that is subject to change. Um, I am actually so pleased with uh, my Ford Maverick that I am uh, seriously considering purchasing another one and having a second one um, at our disposal as well. My wife and I, we own several cars between us, several different vehicles, cars, trucks, and SUVs between us. Uh, but we find that especially with uh, fuel prices going as high as they have been, that uh, we're actually both really enjoying driving the Ford Maverick. and. Uh, at times it kind of cramps my style in order to not be able to drive it whenever I want because the vehicle is in use elsewhere. So I'm thinking of getting uh, getting another one and just designating it uh, purely 100% to my own personal use and having this one be a community vehicle. But we'll kind of keep an eye on Ford and their processes and kind of see how that, how it's going. Uh, there's a lot of funny stuff happening in the automotive industry right now, which is, you know, funny is actually probably not a uh, correct term to use. It's anything but funny. But uh, these uh, new car stores, they are quickly running out of inventory if they have not done so already. Uh, the inventory for these new car stores are dwindling down to just about nothing. The chip shortage is just really taking its toll on the automotive industry. And because of the shortage, you know, just like anything else, the first rule of economics, which would be supply and demand, uh, is ever more evident in the new car industry currently because these folks can't get their hands on new cars. So they are maximizing on every single opportunity. Uh, these new cars are selling for thousands of dollars above MSRP if you can find one at all. A lot of dealerships are also engaging in unethical practices such as forcing their customers to buy optional products. Now you may ask me, how can someone force you to buy an optional product if it's optional? Well, you know, uh, they have the right to refuse service to anybody and refuse to work with anybody. Uh, some of them are being a little bit more honest in the front and, uh, front end and just letting you know, hey, you know, this vehicle uh, it comes with these additional accessories that were 
either putting on or have already put on and uh, we are also requiring an extended warranty and theft protection and other products which total this many thousands of dollars in addition to a market adjustment a market adjustment of you know 3500 4500 5500 and so on and so forth uh, it's really just whatever the market is willing to pay um, it's a sad time it's something that we have never seen i've never seen during my lifetime and i don't think i'll ever see it again um, i hope this doesn't become the new normal because uh, I am a car lover. I am a car enthusiast and I buy lots of vehicles. I collect lots of vehicles and there are still a lot of vehicles on my uh, wish list, especially going in uh, to 2023. A lot of car makers are actually making the switch and the transition into uh, electric and hybrid and electrified vehicles. And for any car enthusiast out there could probably relate to what I'm saying. Um, some of the last uh, vehicles of their kinds are going to be sold in the next year or two and it's just such a shame that uh, we're experiencing these shortages during a time where uh, it is literally your last opportunity to buy a lot of great vehicles that are currently out um, before the transition happens and they either go from a naturally aspirated powertrain uh, to a hybrid slash hybrid and turbo powertrain or until they go purely electric uh, we will have the last of our opportunities to buy some of the really nice muscle cars that are out on the market currently um, a lot of the SUVs that we know of body on frame SUVs with uh, six cylinder and eight cylinder engines they're going down to the eight cylinders are going down to six they're typically being um, turbocharged such as the new Toyota Tundra uh, with the three point uh, I believe it's a 3.5 liter twin turbo, which comes in both a hybrid and a non-hybrid, as well as many others that are going down from six cylinders to four cylinders, adding turbochargers, adding hybrids. Well, you know, all of these things do contribute to additional efficiency, but uh, they do take away from the uh, drivability and uh, drive driving enjoyment of the vehicle more than anything else. Also, a lot of these additional components are just gonna really uh, add to the vehicles uh, unreliability and maintenance that's going to be required there's just nothing wrong with simplicity and sometimes uh, to achieve additional efficiency you do have to make a lot of changes that do affect uh, the reliability of the vehicle and the cost of ownership of the vehicle especially during a time with supply chain shortages where parts are getting more and more difficult to get uh, you're purchasing these vehicles, new car dealerships are selling these vehicles, parts are breaking on them, they're not able to get these parts in in time, and a lot of these brand new cars are becoming lemon law cars because they're getting stuck at the dealerships for a month, two months, three months plus for a part on a brand new vehicle that uh, just cannot be had due to the shortage. So we are certainly looking forward to getting over this, uh, this portion of the pandemic, which is affecting parts, but, uh, but yeah. As far as this Ford Maverick is concerned, we are extremely pleased with it. It's a great vehicle. This is the Lariat trim with the first edition package. It's got all the bells and whistles, all the goodies, power, power, uh, power everything, power seats. We have heated seats, heated steering wheel, dual zone climate control, power rear window. You have a 12 volt power outlet here, a USB charger, USB-C. Um, it's a really nice vehicle, very happy with it. If you're looking to tow something light like a uh, you know maybe an aluminum boat couple jet skis a motorcycle trailer um, you can absolutely do it with this vehicle I don't feel like it's lacking in power handling capability uh, the vehicle itself is extremely comfortable so it's uh, quite ideal for long drives you don't really feel like you're driving a pickup you feel like you're driving a car that is, of course, because this is a unibody vehicle based on the Ford Escape Hybrid and the Bronco 2. Sorry, not the Bronco 2, the Bronco Sport. I am showing my age by saying Bronco 2. Many of you have not even heard of what a Bronco 2 is. We're under about seven, just under seven miles, and our MPGs are actually increasing. We have had a lot of stop and go traffic here, We've had a lot of red lights, but um, I feel like if, uh, if you can get on a smooth road, I'm, I'm pretty sure you could probably achieve 25, 30 miles to the gallon pretty easily with, uh, with this vehicle. 
visibility is great. You have lots of uh, windows, no blind spots. I'm gonna accelerate up this hill here. Now it does look a little funny having a two horse trailer in the back of this uh, smaller truck. This truck with uh, two horses, each weighing seven or 800 pounds, would really put this truck through its paces and probably couldn't be done safely, so I wouldn't recommend that. But this trailer being empty um, does max it out. And of course, folks driving around you don't know if it's empty or not, so it just looks like it looks kind of funny having a truck uh, pulling a trailer that has the potential of uh, being in excess of 5,000 pounds if loaded. Not many areas in the metropolitan uh, California cities that uh, you can really put uh, a tow a video through its paces, put the vehicle through its paces, but uh, this is the best we can do. We do appreciate you joining us. I'll go a little bit further and then we'll do a recap of our MPGs and just see how it held up. At this point, since we are stuck behind another red light, I do want to take this opportunity uh, to ask you to please subscribe. It does certainly help us out when you subscribe to our videos. If you have any questions or comments or if there's any specific content that you would like to see, please leave that in the comment section and we'll be happy to do so. We are fortunate enough to own this vehicle, a vehicle that is highly sought after currently and is on a lot of people's uh, buy lists currently. We are fortunate to have one and uh, we have unlimited amount of time with this vehicle. So if there's anything specific you want to see, I do want to thank another viewer for recommending that we do an infotainment system review, which we also have on our website and on YouTube. So you can view that and kind of see how the infotainment system works. We have several reviews at 1500 miles and at 3000 miles of the vehicle itself. We're going to be doing a oil change video to show you all of you how to change your own oil on this vehicle soon as well. We'll also be doing a 5,000 mile review. So in order to stay uh, informed of all of our past and future reviews, make sure you also hit the bell icon to be notified. So far my impressions of uh, towing with this vehicle is that it's completely doable. This is a great lifestyle vehicle. You can put your mountain bikes back there, you can have uh, go to the home and garden stores and be able to buy merchandise. You can go camping with this thing, lug all of your stuff back there. I'm six foot two and I find when I sit in the back seat of this vehicle there's still plenty of space and I'm not hitting my knees on, on the front seat. So I find that it is uh, quite comfortable to drive and it, it can really be your everything vehicle. Um, I hope in future years they do offer the hybrid and an all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive configuration. That would bring everything full circle for me personally. I would love to see that. But uh, for now we're extremely pleased with it. So in a 2016 Tacoma, and uh, while towing with that vehicle, even with lighter weights as we have today, I do find that uh, the MPGs are affected quite a bit more than it is with this vehicle. Um, don't know what it is with that one, um, but uh, towing with this one is quite doable. We're just about eight miles. We're gonna go ahead and stop here in the shade, recap what we found. You're just about at 19.9 miles per gallon on an eight and a half mile route. Our uh, MPGs have been increasing the longer we drive, so I do have reason to believe that if we were to drive another eight miles, it would completely be possible that we can get up to 25 or 25 plus miles per gallon, um, especially if we weren't doing so, uh, so many stop and goes. Uh, the acceleration with the load behind you does put the truck through its paces. So, um, yeah, it'd be nice to see if we can uh, take a trip with without a whole lot of stop and goes and be able to achieve, you know, 30, 30 plus miles per gallon. But in any case, I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to join us. We certainly hope to see all of your comments. Please do subscribe. We do thank you for sharing your time with us today. And we wish you all a wonderful day. Thank you and goodbye for now.